Uh, hi. Hello. I think I said ahoy, but that's not what I meant. I know this is recorded right now. I meant to say hello and welcome, perspective listeners and viewers. You are back, tuned in um, with another episode with your two favorite co hosts. It is. What's that? What's that? and Martina. So yeah, so welcome back or welcome if this is your first time with us. Um, you know, I think what you all were watching this on Halloween. Well, we are recording this on Halloween, so you're not watching yeah. it, but you will watch it probably two weeks from now. I just want to say that because I had on my Hocus Pocus sweatshirt and it is Halloween. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh -huh. Um, But yeah, so, you know, I want to say like, you know, what are we doing today? We are going to talk about Growing Old in America. Y'all know we love our series. And so this is a series that we've been thinking about for quite some time um, because we're both getting older ourselves and we both have uh, parents who are older and continue to get older. And, you know, between the two of us and I'm sure people that we know, um, I, I know for certain on my end, um, you know, people, no one tells you how growing old can, you know, affect you, yourself as, I think, being the child and trying to parent the parents. And also just, really, I feel like we don't talk enough about what does growing old look like? And I feel like everyone wants to talk about youth, rejuvenation. Honey, you uh, listen, you're not going to stay 30 your whole life. That's okay. None of us are. And, you know, to me, I always think it's a blessing to be able to grow older, but that comes with a lot of, uh, things that happen, whether it be uh, finances or, you know, medical issues. Um, it can be all the assortment of things that kind of, you know, changes as you get older. Um, and so that's what, you know, we wanted to probably, you know, those might be two, three videos of what this conversation might be, but I've talked enough. I said ahoy. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lisette if she would like to add anything to the combo. I think for my ending, you covered it um, perfectly well around sort of why we are doing this sort of mini series and why we're opting to it. You know, we, we both have had experiences with our parents and sort of the, the systems that they have to navigate um, after hitting a certain age uh, in this country, in, in the United States of America uh, and, and what it means. But I, I, I think also for us to explore what it means for us to grow old in America, like what we are um, foreseeing the future will look like for us. Um, we're still very far away from retirement age. I know. But, that's such a thing. But, I, mean, I know, it's that's a whole oh, other, that's a different series. That's a different, <laughs> different segment, yes. Um. But I think, you know, for us to explore what it, what it might look like, what that future will will or will not have uh, for us that maybe, you know, some of our parents are, are you know, services or benefits that they're accessing, um, that they're, you know, that they're able to access versus what we might be able to uh, in the future. But it, it's this topic is I think definitely near and dear to both of us because um I know we've shared in the past just you know uh being sort of caregivers in a sense and taking care of some of our, our parents um whether it's decisions that they have to make financial or medical or you know services that they access or resources um those are all things that I think we're, we're going to talk about and 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 see and and look forward to just hearing any comments from our from our followers and those that have been listening and watching so yeah I mean I don't know where you want to start it's such a it's such a huge topic in so many ways that we could start this conversation I think I was really kind of thinking about the parenting the parents that's you know that's what I mm. that's what I'm gonna call it I feel like um it's parenting the parent because for me as I um, slide on into my thirties more and more each year, um, your parents are also getting older as well, uh, the natural law of things. And probably it's really, probably over the last few years, I would say COVID really. So 2020 
is really, I think, mm -hmm. when things kind of kicked into gear. Because for myself, my father, um, he had a rough year. That was a rough year. He uh, was having liver failure. He had contracted COVID. He had to go into rehab. So he spent a lot of 2020 really just in the healthcare uh, facilities, you know, throughout Illinois. Um, and he was actually here in Chicago for a bit. He was actually at Rush. He was at Northwestern um, for a bit throughout that year as well. And, you know, he's gone up and down and, you know, improved and had some, you know, uh, difficult moments. And, you know, now, you know, he's, he's, he's more stabilized now. And I think, you know, it's kind of the real thing for me when I realized is that, you know, it's, to me, I would say it was kind of a strange feeling in a way to be um, looking after a parent or like looking mm -hmm. after your parents. Because again, it's like the natural law of things is that you're the child. Um, but you know, now we are adults and even though you're still your parent's child, um, mm -hmm. and you like coming to your parents and asking for something, just like your parent being the parent, it's in many ways starts to flip. Um, cause you have to start taking care of your parents and, um, they are like asking you about things, like asking you for advice. So, and you know, both of us work in healthcare, work in public health. They're asking you about, you know, hey, tell me, you know, I will say for my father, he has both Medicare and he has Medicaid. Um, and so I have actually had coworkers kind of help me navigate some things like folks that I've worked with who are experts in that space. I've been very, very appreciative of the help they have been able to provide for me when it comes to like going through all the red tape. Because as we know, there's a lot of bureaucracy in our in our healthcare system. And it's not easy growing old in America as we'll probably eventually get into as well, but it's really not easy. And our, our healthcare system makes it very difficult. I think they believe that it's not difficult. I feel like that's an illusion or a disillusion. Maybe that's a disillusion um, that they feel it's not difficult to navigate. And I'm sure if you have tons of money to put at the, you know, to uh, spend, it probably isn't very difficult to, for you because someone else is doing the let work. But still, whether you have money or not, I think it's difficult to parent a parent. Um, and I think, yeah, 2020 for me was really eye opening. And, you know, I'll talk about my mom a little bit later on, too. But I know for me, I think really that role reversal of mm -hmm. uh, having to be there and show up for your parent, uh, checking in on their doctor's appointments, possibly paying some of their bills, um, being there as a representative, uh, being a part of their responsible party, like, you know, having them put you down as like, this is my person, this is who you contact in case, you know, things go wrong or, you know, for updates on test results. To me, that was very strange. Um, I don't want to say I've gotten used to it, but it is it's very strange to me. And where I mentioned is that I, growing up, you know, you obviously don't think about that as you're a child and adolescent and early early adulthood because um, your parents are still probably paying a, a pivotal role in your growing up. Uh, but that switches. And yeah, that's, you know, I what do you have to say about that? Your thoughts? So many things. I'm trying to process everything you said and then everything that I was thinking as you were talking. Yeah how I, things that resonated and things that, you know, I started thinking back to sort of, you know, when I was younger in childhood and, and growing up. And I know, I think in previous episodes, maybe our first year of recording when we were kind of interviewing and I shared a little bit about being, uh, you know, a daughter of immigrants and the um, the challenges that come with being that because you're the one that knows the English language and you sort of, become that interpreter you translate you read the legal documents and you sort of kind of in a sense grow up a little bit sooner than maybe other kids around you might because you sort of have to do that because there's this expectation of you, you know the language so you can automatically help your parents um so as you were talking I was like have I been parenting my parents or have I been <laughs> be an adult for way longer than I probably think or, or uh <laughs> sort of realize um 
but you know to to what you were sharing you know there comes a point where you know your parents um may not have the the resources that other parents have right and sort of um whether it's because the opportunities weren't afforded to them things just kind of didn't go the way that they thought it was going to go and um and you made the comment of like if you're you know well off financially in this country things are easier when you get older um access to whether it's care or any other things it just becomes easier and 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 that's the the sad truth of it right if you don't have uh money point blank if you don't have money to afford the the health care and the plans and you know the care that you might need as you get older it's going to be a struggle and you know, as you were talking about, you know, your dad in 2020, I think about towards the, the end of 2020, you know, my dad uh, ended up falling and, you know, and, and, and sort of uh, having to be in a um, rehab home and, and all of that. And, and just navigating that, which I believe I remember I sh- we shared it. I shared that story um in one of the episodes if I find it I'll link it and you all can get more details as to what navigating that was but I remember it was my sister and I having to advocate for my dad to get the care be at the the right medical location because you know he was at one hospital and then you know we ended up you know somewhere else and uh and they were like, well, this may or may not be covered, you know, or uh, Medicare only covers this much. You all would have to do this. We don't know. Like he needs to go to a, a rehab. We, the hospital doesn't have any more space and like the, pro, you know, the location that they have in house. Uh, so we have to find them somewhere else. We don't know how much so-and-so will cover. And what was, so I remember just feeling very defeated for a while because I'm like I just want my dad to get better like I just want him to get better I want him to be taken care of I want him to be in a safe place as safe as you know you could be at that point because COVID was still around and and things like that and but I was like we knew he couldn't be home because he went home he's gonna fall and hurt himself all over again and just become become worse and it was, it was like a month long struggle to um, get him finally the operation, the surgery that he needed, and then to get him placed into a um, rehab, you know, where he could be, you know, 24 uh, seven during a recovery period uh, where he was, you know, strong enough to be home. Um, and I remember having to just go and look through different Medicare plans, Medicare Advantage plans, and like supplemental insurance and all these things. And it was the most overwhelming just experience because you don't, you don't know all these terms. You don't know what exactly you're going to need and what kind of service you're going to get covered. And you're, you're trying to make sense of it. And, you know, they're, thankfully, because we are in sort of this public health realm, there are people that I have the opportunity to reach out to and ask questions and that can help navigate. But, but if I didn't have that, <laughs> I can only imagine how lost I would be because I was feeling lost. And I'm like, I know that I'm a smart person. I know that <laughs> I, I can read English. This is English. Why doesn't it make sense to me? <laughs> I was like, why is it so hard? And <laughs> and it just sort of like, and then, you know, your parents are looking at you to have the answers to know and be able to decipher this and be able to just give them the like roadmap of like, here's what you have, here's what we're going to do, and here's how it's going to go. Um, and, and it just it's not easy um, because, you know, you, your parents, you know, 
might have a vision of what how things should work and the reality is it doesn't work that way and then they get frustrated because they're like well it, it doesn't make sense or why is it like that um and you're like it just is because we don't have the finances to afford you know this so we have to go through all these loops and sort of challenges and barriers and sort of jump hoops and twirl and do all kind of jumping jacks and somersaults to get to the end point um that if you had the money and you can just pay it off you can just go straight and get the service and you know, and get whether it's medical care, whether it's getting in the right rehab home, sort of um, nursing rehab home to just be able to get the, you know, the top care. Um, but because you don't have that, you end up having to find a, a spot in maybe a location that doesn't have the best reviews, might not have everything that you might need, but it's the best that you can get. Um, and you at least from my end, the experience that is like, you just end up settling for whatever you can get. Um, and I think that's the experience from a um, getting older. I feel like you just have to settle for what you get as you get older, whatever, you know. So if you didn't make the right investment decisions in your younger years and you don't have, you know, $3 million to you know fall back on <laughs> um More. which three million dollars is probably not even a lot you say, know, three million. <laughs> that can be a hospital stay <laughs> so you know so it's that's you know to what you were saying you know that's what you when you were talking like that's what it made me think about and, and it is hard it is hard to um be the one that you're you have to break it to your parents of like yeah we we need to to wait a little longer or can't get you that or we have to just go through this loop I need we need to go here instead of there and um you know when I think about for me one of the biggest things is medications um and and sort of how much it costs to a even have a prescription plan or have a plan that will cover prescriptions it's super expensive when you're older so a lot of people go without having you know a plan that will cover prescriptions and other necessities dental care and all things because it's so expensive um once you're older and that's sad like how how do we not cover any of that like how does medicare not automatically be like we're covering dental and like you know um vision and pres pres at least prescriptions but like you have to pay an arm and a leg to get prescription prescription coverage and it's like geez you know it, it doesn't it doesn't give you a lot of hope at least for me to be like oh i look forward to getting older in america um because they really take care of us as you get older and it's like no they don't and it forces you know whether it's all of the all of the children or one of the one of the children to have to step up and and be the care not just a caregiver but sometimes the you know the individual that's um you know balancing the finances and making sure that you know the the insurance coverage is there and making sure that all these things are are are, are being uh whether it's paid or, or things like that because you know older generations aren't doing online bill pay you know and, and doing things like that so it you know it becomes a, a lot of it so you do end up being the parent like i, I I think about like my my sister and I and my sister you know has has a, a son and it's sort of like yeah what you do for your kid like we have to do for our parents <laughs> it's a lot of the same things like you have to uh you have to remind them you have to take them to places like all these things and um yeah like it's it's just 
interesting to to be on this side and see a little bit of that role reversal that you were talking about um and the and the the responsibility that that comes with it um and i think the lack of understanding from from others who may not be experiencing um what you and i my experience with our parents um who don't have to be the ones that are are calling Medicare or figuring out Medicare or having to talk to their doctor or set up appointments and, and all these things and um and be like the person that gets the phone call of like, hey, you know, this, you know, here's an update or things like that. And I think as a society, there isn't a lot of understanding. Um for that side of caregiving, um, particularly for the younger generations who are stepping into those caregiver roles uh, and who still have to fulfill the demands of what um, being in the work workplace um, in their lives demands. Yeah, yeah. And, and all those things. So I said a lot. I don't, I don't know if I made sense. That's what we always that. do on here. Again, I was like, oh, Lord, where do I start? But I, you, to me, you gave a really good example of parenting the parent when you were saying, you know, um, sometimes you have to pick the best that you can do. And it makes me to go back to times when I was a child and I may have wanted something or something didn't go my way. And my parents had to find a way to tell me, you know, mm-hmm. how did they tell you this without you know, your child getting upset or making sure that they understand because still, you know, children, even teenagers, there's a lot, you know, your parents go through that, A, that you probably never know about because you're a child and they want you to stay in a child's place. Uh, They want you to like not grow up fast. So when you were talking about, you know, some of your things is that you might have grew up a little bit faster because before even all the healthcare and the medical situations may have came up with your parents, you know, you were the one in your family uh, or one of the ones in your family who were part of that younger generation who had to do a lot of translating for your parents Mm -hmm. from the get go. And so that role has continued to evolve over the years to where you are now, like you said, a caregiver, but also you could be the one that's financially responsible for your parents or financially responsible for paying their bills, uh, including medical bills, including like the bills to live in a house. Um, And to me, that is such a prime example of what it means to like parent the parent. And I think, Hmm. um, you know, it really hit me when you said sometimes you just have to go with what you like the best that you can do. I think sometimes that's for me, I think with my own father and my mother, it's really hard for me sometimes to really realize that, that, you know, that's the best I can do right now, given money or the time. Uh, It could be some other factors in there as well, but it's like, you know, when you don't have access to money, and again, I know, you know, some people may say, you know, money's not everything, but in these situations, it really is. Mm -hmm. Because yep. when you have like you, three million dollars can just cover like a hospital stay for a week by mm-hmm. the time everything is tallied up. Um, yeah. Everybody wants to get paid from that. Um, and people do deserve to get paid. I'm not saying that either. People have a job and they deserve to get paid. But it also is, goes back to the inadequacies that are in our healthcare care system um, where we know the majority of the people in this country cannot afford health care. This has like been an ongoing issue. It's nothing surprising. And it really makes you think as we get older, what are our lives going to look like? Uh, because I mean, I'm going to be frank. I don't want to have to go through some of these issues that my parents have gone through in terms of their health situation. Uh, and I know mm-hmm. you and I, you know, we're both on our uh, weight loss journey. Well, uh, you know, I shouldn't say weight loss. We're on a, a health, a health wellness journey. And weight loss has just been a part of it. And, you know, we know within our communities, there are, you know, high blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, heart disease, you just keep going down the list. And, you know, I know my parents have a number of those different conditions as well, because it's prevalent throughout the community and issues that I've had to fight with myself, which is why I'm on this path of, you know, this path of wellness. And, you know, like I said, I'm gonna be frank, I look at, sometimes look at my parents and like, you know, I'm like, this in a way propels me to want to invest more 
uh, in my health and more financially. But then I also remember that's a privilege for me because that wasn't a privilege that my parents were necessarily given. They didn't have that option. And so that's the, also a thing that I gripe with as well. You know, I can say here and say this, this, that, and another, but my parents, they were not even given the opportunity to even be set up for yeah. success when it came to their finances or came to their healthcare choices. And we know Medicare and Medicaid, very complex, uh, two different healthcare systems that people often think are very similar. I mean, they are, but they're also very different and very yep. complex and have a number of different offices and divisions and different things that make those organizations who they are. I would say make them function, but goodness, function. <laughs> Barely functioning, I, I should say Barely. that. Um, but yeah, when you said sometimes just doing the best that you can, that may be like, listen, that's all Medicaid can pay. Like, that's all they can pay. And you may not yourself or whomever may be listening to this, who has gone through this, the people who are going through this right now can understand, like, you know, um, you're trying to support yourself as well. And then you may have to think, you know, I might financially have to take care of my parent, maybe not entirely. Uh, but you might have to come out of your own pocket sometime and try to think, you know, is this something I might have to pay for? Can I afford it? Um, because I'll tell you, you know, everything is just so expensive. And even, you know, if you have a really good job, honey, what is it like now if you make like $200,000? $200, that's like the equivalent of like $100,000 nowadays is like, so making two yeah. hundred k per year is nothing. Um, mm -hmm. And inflation is only probably going to get worse. And it's just all these different things that go into that. And really for myself, if if I um, was more financially, uh, I'm, I'm financially stable, but more financially able, I would say, um, you know, my father is in an assistant living facility and you talking about having to go through, you know, finding rehab for your father. It is a headache. <laughs> I, to find my father, I mean, I've got my father in, I think is uh, a nice facility. I'm sure there are nicer ones out there, but he's content and he's happy. And that's all that matters to me um, and how he's being treated there. But it was a lot. Uh, I had to work with, because uh, before he got to that assisted living place, he was in rehab. So I had to work with social workers. I had to work with uh, coordinators. I really depended on them too at times to help me find out what's out there. Um, because, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know everything about healthcare and I'm sure what I know is only a sliver of what's even out there. Um, and on top of that, me having to work a nine to five and sometimes having to work earlier than that or sometimes working later than that. And then you still, you know, I might get an email from his nurse saying, oh, this happened today or we need your signature on this. Um, and shit, I didn't get to it until like nine o'clock at night because I'm working all day. So it's just a, just a lot of different uh, things that continue to evolve when it comes to parenting the parent. And um, I've said a lot too, and I could continue to talk about this, but. You know. No, I think you, you, there at the end, you know, that you have your nine to five and then you have another five to nine. Um kind of work because it is that like there are moments where I think my parents have asked me to look into something or or find them some information or or make a refill for like just things that they'll ask me to do and I'll forget because you know I have life right like I have work and, and these other things and and then I'll forget and they feel so bad when I forget and they'll, you know, when they're really nice and they'll remind me and they're like, oh, did you get a chance? And I'm like, oh my gosh. And I attempt to try to do it right then when they remind me, because if not, the likelihood of me forgetting again is going right. to happen. Yes. Um, but it, it it is then, you know, and, and it, you, that is such a valid point because you you end up having you know a whole other job um per se and I'm not saying taking my parents is a job or it's a chore or anything it's just it's it's extra time that you take and you know I I remember some people commenting of like why haven't you moved out you know and and these were people at 
my job you know you know people that were higher up than me and they're like oh you know why haven't you you know moved out or why you know why haven't you why are you on your own why don't you have your own home <laughs> you know and like and I was just like not because I can't I just didn't want to and I don't want to because I'm like hey a it's not a burden it's not anything out of the ordinary for me to be here and be able to be a resource to my parents and and what it comes with it um and all that but it's and that's why I think early like as a society we don't really see value in in getting older and taking care of your elders in sort of the American culture, if we were to go back uh, uh, a couple of series ago around American culture, we talked about that. And, you know, in our culture, it's like, you know, grandma and grandpa are going to live with us until, you know, whatever family member who needs us is going to live and we're going to take care of them. And it could be, you know, a tío, a tío, like whatever it is, like whoever it is in the family, if they need us, we're, you know, we'll be there and, you know, you'll open your home to them. Um, and, I, and, you know, it, it took me a while to be okay with people sort of questioning the fact that, you know, I choose to stay home. And, and also, like, it's not like I was making, you know, a lot of money to be able to afford to, like, go and, like, do these things and, and still be able to help out my parents. Like, that, whether it's my parents, whether it's other family members, um, like there is, when I think about my future, that's always in the back of my mind, any decision I make, I'm like, okay, if I do this, or if I take this, does it afford me the opportunity, the privilege, whatever, to be able to bless others that are around me to be able to, you know, and whatever that blessing might look like, whether it's financial, whatever it may be. Um, that's always a question. And I think as, and other individuals that I've seen, take on a much more um, involved caregiver role. There's people that I've seen who become their sole caregiver for their parents and who take on the role of what a caregiver is, taking them to their appointments, keeping track of their medications and all these things. Um, it It's a lot, you know, and it's a lot of sacrifices that individuals have to make. Yeah. Um, to be able to do that and to be able to help and and to still have people be like well why don't you put yourself first and it's like because my parents always put us first so now yeah. I want to make sure that I I can put them not first per se but that I also in, in decisions that I'm that we're making that I'm doing like they're part of that like um, so I just find it very fascinating. There's fascinating that there's people who who don't understand that. And yeah. it's usually individuals whose parents are completely healthy, who are financially okay. Maybe they're not like super wealthy finan you know, financially, but they're okay and they don't, you know, need uh additional, you know, support in that way or sort of you know has struggle with it or not um those are typically the people individuals who will make those kind of comments of like well you know you have to take care of yourself too and you have to do this and and I'm like I am though like it's not like I'm not okay like I'm enjoying I am privileged to what you said earlier privileged to be able to you know live a life and have you know the things that I want to do and still be able to um, do these other things, but it's just interesting as, you know, as a, as an American culture, as just a society, there is that connotation of like, you know, you got to fend for yourself and you got to take, you know, you, it's, it's me, 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 I, 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 before anybody else, um, even if that somebody else is your parent or, you know, or a family member, um, or things like that. It's just, it's just one of those like fascinating things as you were sharing and talking that made me think about um, just comments that I've gotten from other people who, who are like, oh, but you know, and it typically happened when I 
got into like more you know higher uh yeah. positions uh where people were like well you know you make more money like why don't you move out and I was like and in, in whatever economy we were in because you know after 2008 the economy was has never been the same okay um and so I was like a, it took forever for me to get into these higher positions anyway. Um, but it's just it's just fascinating that as I think back, those comments were made and some people still make them or some people still kind of question it. Um, others have come to realize like, hey, that's part of, that's what comes with the territory, particularly because we're seeing a much, a, a, a society that's getting older and we're seeing more and more in, you know older individuals falling through the cracks and and sort of being you know forgotten or left behind or, or not having the resources I think there's a more awareness of the reality uh, of it um but it's it's um it's sad it's also fascinating that we're having this conversation um because there's there's so many ways for us to explore this and and to go uh different routes and i think um thinking of just like future conversations to be talking about um where we see us as you know i'm getting closer to 40 uh at this point um than i you know than ever and <laughs> i'm like you know that's it's not old, but it's also like, oh, it's 40. And then you kind of, you start thinking of like, where am I financially? Where if, you know, if I'm thinking ahead and like, will I be better off than I was, than my parents were? Um, and, you know, what realistically do I need to have to be able to retire? Because if we think about individuals who are still working, there's still a lot of people who are past the retirement age and are still having to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that might be what we talk about the next episode. You know, it could be. And I think, you know, to me, this may be a very bold statement, but I think no matter where I end up, I'm going to be better off than my parents just because of the opportunities I have had um, in my life. Um, mm -hmm. and we know as women, as people of color, it's hard to get any opportunities, but it's hard to really get great opportunities. Um, and so I, I, I will be better off in many ways. Now, will I be able to retire at 60? I doubt it. I doubt it. No, probably won't be able to. No. Um, but I'm working towards that goal. And, you know, I say that not to be smart, but to say like, grow up, we didn't have much. We went back and forth between broke and just flat out poor, but luckily, like, you know, like, like I've said in the past, we had great family, um, who, you know, who would, uh, step in, like, from time to time, I didn't even know, like, what was yeah. going on, um, yeah. that, you know, oh, you know, maybe mom and dad couldn't have paid that bill this month, or, you know, so forth, um, but family was always right there, and, you know, all in all, I had a pretty good childhood, um, when I think about things in a larger scale. So I think, uh, you know, that's the way my parents, uh, they always say that, and most parents say, you know, they always want their children to have better, or do better than yeah. what they have. But I, I, I feel very confident that the way that they've raised me, um, I will be. I mean, even now, I am I am more better off in some areas than my parents, which is still kind of mind blowing to me at the same time, but that's what I've worked towards. I've worked, um, to not be in some of the situations that they are. And again, like I said, that's a privilege because my parents and probably your parents, they didn't have that sort of opportunities. And sometimes you don't even know what's out there, especially if you're a person of color, you don't know what's even exist out there uh, as far as opportunities for your children. Um, and you don't even know where to start. And I think that kind of plays into this where us having to try to figure out where do you even start? Um, because, yeah. you know, with you and, you know, you talking about you and your sister back in January, I mean, back in 2020, the uh, the end of the year, and just me, I continue to be the primary person for my dad. Now, I'm fortunate with uh, my my brother 
is able to help with my mother down in Mississippi. So that's a blessing in itself. But I mean, again, I'll get into some areas with that where it's still, it's still difficult. But with my dad, I'm the sole person. And my father's been through a lot. And, you know, uh, he is, like I said, he's in a much better place. But um, it, it does. It just really, like you said, as we get closer and closer to growing older, it's very eye-opening. And for me, Again, I, I say it is a privilege for me to be able to be there for my parents. Uh, I don't see that as a burden. Now, is it hard? Yes, it can be very difficult. Like you say, you're frustrated. It's complicated. You got to talk to this person. That person don't know. You got to talk to five other people to find out something. Uh, but I'm very fortunate. I still have my parents in my life. Um, yeah. I'd rather be doing this than, than, than not having them in my life. So, yeah. I agree a hundred percent of everything you said and coming from the, the place of privilege, you know, um, I will say having, you know, a sibling who is able to sort of be in the trenches with me and sort of navigate the system like that, that is helpful because, um, I can only imagine how hard it is when you don't have uh, someone else and you may be the only person that's navigating this and, and able to, to step in. Because when I can't be there, whether it's physically, like physically can't be there and like do something, like yeah. I can reach out and be like, hey, are you able on so-and-so date to, you know, take my mom here or do this? Or can you, can you call? Because y'all know me and, and phones aren't friends um and making phone calls aren't friends and there's a lot of phone I be, calls <laughs> you you have to like if i have to if my sister ain't available and i just have to suck it up and make the phone call that you know, is a struggle for me um you know to have that and be able to do that i think is um it's just it's just, you know, to to your point, just uh, a privilege and a blessing to be able to to say that and 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 be in that that position. And um, I think this is a good spot for us to to uh, close out this first episode in in this uh, growing old in America. I think that's just the the title of this this series. Yeah. Um, uh, but you know. If you have any thoughts, you know, our our viewers and, and listeners, uh, comments around anything that we we shared, you know, similar experiences you might be having. Like we'd love to hear from you. Um, whether you, you comment on, you know, on YouTube or you reach out to us uh on Instagram or Facebook, uh, we'd love to just kind of hear. Uh, interested in hearing your experiences um, if you are sort of in that age where you may be you know taking on more responsibilities uh, in that uh, involve your parents or you're thinking about what the future holds for you as you get older and you're you're you're, you're having to make those decisions of like you know what what retirement may look like and what you're working towards and what you're putting uh, aside from that but uh, please share anything with us. We'd love to um, be able to respond and, and share others' thoughts as well um, in doing that. And I think, as I mentioned, I think, you know, next episode, next couple episodes, you might explore a little bit more around sort of this uh, stepping in and, you know, and, and pairing the parent, but also looking at that older generation that exists right now and, and sort of their reality and, and, you know, what I've seen and, you know, what we're seeing, you know, there's a lot of older individuals who are still working, who are, are doing jobs, you know, like who are delivery drivers, whether it's through Uber, whether it's pizza delivery, whether they're working in um grocery stores and, and other sort of retail uh, stores, uh there's a lot to unpack there and and, and talk through so uh stay tuned and, you know join us you know at the next episode uh and you know martina and i will be back we shall. bye everyone right. take care